Welcome to Moggy Box Craft. I'm Debra, and today we are making toffee apple cider or something that resembles toffee apple cider. <laughs> so, what are you going to need for this project? A fermentation bin, essential, or a bin that has a lid. It does have a lid. It does tell me on the side here how much it holds. I've already sterilised my bin using this stuff. I'm going to put this to one side for the moment. You're going to need a saucepan, some spoons and a knife a bowl and some kitchen scales. I mean, you don't really need the kitchen scales. You can't just throw ingredients in and hope for the best. Sometimes we do that. It's fine. Did I say a saucepan? I think I did. That's my utensils. The first and main ingredient you're gonna need is 20 liters of apple juice. Leave two liters to the side. We're going to need that for adding the flavor. Go ahead and put 18 liters into your bucket. This is gonna take a bit of time. All my apple juice is in my bin. So to make this apple juice taste like toffee apple, we're going to add some extra ingredients and heat them up using the two layers of apple juice that we didn't add to the bucket. Maple syrup, treacle, and vanilla extract. Get your pot. I'm gonna add about one liter of apple juice to this pot. You want to have a bit extra apple juice left out because the first time you're gonna do the flavorings is a taste test. You might want to repeat this step if you want the flavour to be stronger or you want to make it a stronger alcohol. I'm just going to add two jars of maple syrup because I can. There's a little bit of one of them, but I think it works out to be about 450 ml altogether. And I'm going to add some treacle. The last time we made this recipe, I think we put in about three tablespoons. I have no idea how much three tablespoons really is. But today I thought I would weigh it. Let's see what 150 looks like. Oh, I'm never gonna get this back at the bowl, am I? Yeah, do you know, I think I'm gonna put in 150 grams to start with. Ooh, too much, it's too much, no. Okay, turns out we've got 162 grams of treacle. How am I ever going to get this in here? We'll probably end up with about 150 grams to end up with. Pop the treacle into the pot as well. <laughs> a sticky mess. Why did I not use a smaller bowl for this? I don't know. Turn on your stove and start heating up your mixture. So we're gonna heat this up until all the treacle and maple syrup dissolve into the apple juice. So that's been heating up for about five minutes now and I think the treacle has completely dissolved. So I'm gonna pop that off the heat. So before I add my treacle and maple syrup mix into the bucket of apple juice, I'm gonna take an alcohol reading using a hydrometer. And that'll give us an idea how strong this would be if we just fermented the apple juice versus how much stronger it might be by adding all the extra sugar that's contained in the maple syrup and the treacle. Pop my hydrometer in. So on the left hand side here, it'll tell us how much of alcohol percentage by volume. So that's sitting just about the five mark. So now I'm going to add my pot of maple syrup and treacle to this fermentation bin. And then we'll take another reading to see if it makes it any stronger. Give it a little bit of a stir. Oh, that's a seriously treacly colour now. Toffee apple, Halloween. Is that what I'm doing? Am I just prepared for Halloween? Halloween's my Christmas. What can I say? This part of the video that you're seeing is filmed while in lockdown in Scotland. I've got nothing better to do but to make cider. Hopefully by the time this stuff's ready, we won't be in lockdown any longer. And if I'm really lucky, everything will be getting a little bit back to normal. And I'll be able to share a couple of these bottles with friends around a barbecue. Wouldn't that be a delight? Fingers crossed. Let's take another reading. It's gone up a bit, so about 6%. That's pretty good going, isn't it? So I'm happy with the alcohol content. I don't particularly like alcohol super duper strong, but if you wanted your alcohol to be stronger at this point, you could repeat this process with the apple juice and dissolve some extra sugar into that mix instead and add that to your bucket. You can keep repeating that process until you get the strength of alcohol you want. I'm not going to add any extra sugar. The apple juice already contains quite a lot of sugar to start with. Now that's gonna be turned into alcohol. So let's concentrate on flavor now. So now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. I thought I'd start off with two tablespoons. Two. I'm going to give this a bit of a stir. What does it taste like? I think we're definitely gonna need some more treacle. I'm gonna add an extra two tablespoons of vanilla. That's three, four. Oh, there's not much left in the bottle, bugger it. Let's just add the whole lot. It'll be fine. I'm gonna add the rest of my apple juice to my pot. 
how much treacle will I add? 140 grams and make it a nice round 300 grams altogether. If <laughs> there's enough in here. I'm just going to use the rest of this as well. I'm going to pop the extra maple syrup into my pot with the apple juice. Or at least try to. I am going to heat this mix up again to dissolve the maple syrup. Maple syrup? Did I say maple syrup before? I meant treacle. So I'm going to heat this mixture up and dissolve the treacle. And I'll be right back. The apple juice is heated up and the treacle is melted. Pop this into the bucket with the rest of the apple juice. I've got no other ingredients left to add if this isn't good. But we didn't put this much treacle in the last batch we did and it was really nice. So it'll be fine. Another little taste test. With a clean spoon. Remember to use clean spoons. Don't be double dipping. Right, here we go. Oh yeah, okay. I can taste a little bit more now. I'm going to take one last hydrometer reading. See what we're sitting at. About the 6% mark. So now it's time to add some Camden tablets. Prevents oxidisation and bacterial infection when bottling wine or cider. Provides long-term stability to the brew. So it's one tablet per five litres. I've used 20 litres of apple juice. So I'm going to put in four tablets. Easiest way to do this. Between two teaspoons. Crush them. Oh my gosh, this is where it goes everywhere. Well, oh, they crush quite easily actually. So I've just crushed that into a fine powder. Sprinkle that into the bin on top of the apple juice. Now that's done. Give that a good stir. Don't judge the fact I'm wearing pyjamas. You're all wearing pyjamas too in lockdown. Don't lie to me. Everyone on their conference calls looking all smart at the top and, you know, lounge on the bottom. Something like that anyway. I'm going to pop on my lid. And now we wait for 24 hours. It's now been 24 hours. Well, actually it's been 48 hours. That's how it's looking. Now it's time to add the yeast to start the fermentation process. This is the one I'm using. So I've got cider yeast. But apparently you can use champagne yeast as well. Who knew? I've got a small glass of warm water. Not too warm. You don't want to kill the yeast. I'm going to use between 5 and 10 grams of yeast. Usually half of one of these packets. I have previously weighed this and it's 8 grams. So pop that into your glass. That looks horrible, doesn't it? And give it a stir. Oh, that's how it looks now it's been mixed. And we're going to pour this into the apple juice. And give it a stir. That does smell really good now. Pop the lid back on. You could put this mix straight into Demi John's, but we find it's better to do it this way simply because there's going to be like a lot of gunge and froth and all that jazz that comes out of this. That'll settle on the bottom of this bucket. So when we filter this into the Demi John's, it'll be a clearer cider, hopefully. Over the next few days, this will create a very ambient smell as <laughs> the like, yeast starts working. And if you've made cider before, you'll know what I mean. You might want to put this bin in a different room out of the way until that smell dissipates. But I'm going to leave mine on the dining room table because I don't care. So I'm going to leave this to start fermenting and I'll see you guys in a week. Our mix has now been in here for seven days. So I'm now going to use a siphon and put this liquid into Demi John's. Let's see what this looks like, shall we? I've not actually looked at this yet. Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? So what we're seeing here is the yeast turning the sugar into alcohol which is releasing carbon dioxide bubbles. So we're now going to put this into these. So each Demi John holds five litres, so we're going to need four of these. Now, before you pop any liquid in your Demi Johns, make sure you sterilise them. I've already sterilised mine with this stuff. I've also sterilised my siphon tube. I did have an incident though. This is the Demi John that got broken. This thing should have an extra handle. But I've managed to knock this one against our sink and break it. So we're one Demi John down. When you're working with these, be careful. Don't bash them against the sink or any other hard surface. Don't break them. Be more careful. So thankfully, we've got more than four Demi Johns. So now the equipment and the Demi Johns are sterilised. Let's start racking off the cider. We are going to stick it in the siphon, pop the tube through the handle, try and keep it a bit more steady. Thank you, Assistant Andy and hold it in place using a hair clip. So to make this work, we need to have our Demi Johns lower than our bucket of alcohol, or this isn't going to work. It's going to flow really slowly, or not at all. Put a towel down, protect any chairs. If you get any mess, clear it up fast because sugar is really sticky if it dries. 
keep everything clean and tidy and hygienic. I'm going to suck the alcohol through here and just as it gets to this point I'm going to turn off the tap and stick it into my demi joint and turn it back on. Let's see if I can make this work, shall we? Oh, oh nicely done, right. So that's just clipped on there. Alcohol running through the tube into the demi -john. This could take some time. So I'm going to fill my demi -johns as full as I can up to about here, leaving a tiny bit of air gap at the top. Not much, you don't want much air in there. Three demi -johns are filled. Bucket's looking rather empty. I've moved my demi -johns onto the floor on top of this towel. I'm filling up the last demi -john. If we've got any left in there, I will try and top off the rest of these, maybe just fill them a tiny bit higher. The demi -johns do take a little while to fill up sometimes. And just turn it off, we just swipe this horizontally. Job done. Demi -johns are as full as I can get them. Since there's a little bit left in the bucket, I'm going to fill up a couple of glasses so we can try it. Four demi -johns, three pint glasses. You can probably see in the bottom there all the scum from the cider making process. And that's what we don't want to be in the demi johns because it's a bugger to get clean. We've got our four demi johns, our three pints. Oh, yes. Yum, yum, yum. The next step is to make your demi john a closed system using one of these. Stick it in the bottle here so that seals the bottle. I've already cleaned mine and already pre filled them with water. Super easy to do. And put a little cap on top to stop any dust falling in. So as the yeast continues to ferment with the sugar and create alcohol, that's going to release carbon dioxide, which is these little bubbles that you're going to start seeing coming up in here. This little contraption basically gives your carbon dioxide somewhere to go, but without letting any dust into your or contaminants into your demijohn. Genius! I'm going to leave these for probably about two weeks. And in that time, it'll bubble quite vigorously and slowly die away to zero bubbling. And that'll indicate that all the sugar's been used up and turned into alcohol. You can bottle them straight away, but I'm going to wait a few extra weeks, anything up to an extra four weeks, just to let any sediment completely drop to the bottom of my demijohn so I get a clearer cider. How quickly your cider, your alcohol ferments, does depend on how warm your room is. So do take that into consideration. So now we wait. Cheers. Andy! Well, at least the dogs are listening. No, she said Andy. Do you want to try some cider? Not for doggies, sorry. It's not for you. Come join me. Tell me what you think. I got three extra glasses. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. <laughs> I know, right? Cheers. Cheers. What do you think? Definitely get the treacle in that. Mmm. I was going to say, what's the scum on the bottom of this called? What is that? Well, that is just like the yeast and everything, because there's nothing, there's no fruit or anything in this. Yeah, it's would, just yeast. So let's say you could take a spoonful of that, and you, if you just fill that back up with apple juice, it would ferment again. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough demijohns for that shit. It's like the golden goose of cider. Oh, it's like a pseudo starter. Yeah, exactly. But for cider, <clears throat> I'll pop back in again when the demijohns really ramp up the bubbling, so you guys can see that. Because that's still quite sweet just now as well. When, yeah. it's, when it's finished, there won't be any sweetness, so it'll be quite really sharp and quite dry. Woohoo! And then we add more sweetness. Well, it's now been five weeks since I put the cider into these demijohns. They're still quite cloudy. I mean, there's been a little bit of sediment falling to the bottom. They stopped bubbling about three weeks ago. Originally, I wasn't gonna put pectolase into the demijohns, but for the sake of experimentation, today I'm going to put pectolase in two of these demijohns so we can see the difference and see if it makes them even clearer compared to these two. I'm going to be using pectolase. Use a level teaspoon per gallon, which is five liters, or there or thereabouts. Pop tops off these. Nice level teaspoon. Pop that into the demijohn carefully. <gasps> oh no! Okay, I was not expecting that. Probably shouldn't have put that back on. I should put my hand over it instead. <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. I'm going to go and flush this thing out now. Should we try that again? Am I even ready for this? Oh god. It's 
going to put my hand over it to stop it exploding out. That one's not nearly so bad. Let's try and mix in that Pecklies. I'm just using a chopstick. Why is this one not... Why is it not happening with this one? Give it a good stir as well. I'm going to stick these back on. So I don't mix these up, I'm going to mark these with a P for Pectolase. Now I just have to wait and see if it makes any difference and these two become clearer. There's a very faint pee on both of these. So these two Demijohns are the ones I added Pectolase to and I don't think it's made any difference at all. When you put a light behind them, they're pretty much all the same. I don't think it's made any difference because I haven't used any fruit matter I think the colour comes from the treacle. So that's fine. So it's now been seven weeks since I put the cider into the Demijohns. It is time to bottle. So the first step in bottling is knowing how many bottles you're going to need. Each Demijohn should give me 13 330 milliliter bottles. So I'm going to need 52 bottles in total. I just got mine off eBay. Easy peasy. So I've filled up my five gallon bucket with hot water. Added a couple of teaspoons of sterilizer. This is the one I'm using. Gave it a really good stir. I think my five gallon bucket can fit about 26 bottles. So two Demi John's worth. So I just popped the bottles in, submerging them. Once I got all the bottles in there, I just left them to soak. After they were done soaking, I tipped out the contents, gave them a really good rinse with hot water under the tap. I just stacked them up and left them to dry. So I'm going to add sugar and sweetener to the bottles first using a funnel. This is the sweetener I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using xylitol because it's a non-fermenting fake sugar. And then to get some carbonation and fizz, we are going to use ordinary plain granulated sugar. They both look really similar. This is the sweetener and this is the sugar. I'm going to be using one teaspoon of the sweetener and I'm going to use half a tablespoon of sugar. I also found these really cute bottle caps on eBay. I couldn't decide which colour I wanted, so I got both. I've got this raspberry pink colour and a metallic blue. I shall decide later which one I'm going to use. And of course you're going to need your bottle cap putter on it. Pop your cap on the bottle, pop this on top, close, job's a good in. But first I'm going to pop the top off this Demijohn and using my hydrometer I'm going to check that all the sugar has been used up and made into alcohol. No, oh, I'm never going to get this back out again, am I? Is this going to be a dangerous thing to do, maybe? As you can see, it's sitting at zero, which means all the sugar has been used up and turned into cider. Now, how in heck am I going to get this back out again? Oh, not actually as difficult as I thought. I'm going to add sugar and sweetener to the bottles first because it makes life a whole lot easier. And then I'm going to pop in the cider. So I've added the sugar and the sweetener to all the bottles. It is now time to add the cider. Very precariously balanced. Pop the end in. Try not to disturb the sediment too much. But I'm asking tape. A little bit of masking tape up here. A little bit of masking tape here. Just to keep everything secure. Now to get the cider flowing. I'm just going to stuck on the end of this till the cider comes out and then close the little valve and then we can start filling the bottles. Oh. Let's get these bottles filled. Demi John is just about empty. Hopefully we've not disturbed the sediment too much. I've got 13 full bottles and three Demi Johns to go. So I'm going to get cracking with that. And then we're going to put some bottle caps on. You know I was going to choose the pink bottle tops, didn't you? So did I. Get your bottle of booze. Get your bottle cap. Place it on top of your bottle. This is my bottle closer, does what it says on the tin, put the arms up, place it on top of your bottle, push the arms down, cap is attached. Just going to give my bottles a really good shake just to mix in that sugar. So that is the cider all bottled. I think we've got 53 bottles in total. So now all I've got to do is wait for two to four weeks for the sugar to carbonate and produce some fizz and then we can try it. Oh, and I've also got to make some labels. It's done! It's been five and a half weeks now since I bottled the cider. We've got beautiful labels. I've labelled all 53 bottles. The sweetener will have added a little bit of sweetness. And the extra sugar we added when bottling should give it a little bit of fizz. So, let's do a taste test. Andy! Do you want a 
try some cider? The method and the recipe for the cider will be in the description box below, so you can go and check that out and make it yourself. Shall we do the honours? Will it fizz? Oh, that's good. Let's pour over some ice to enjoy, shall we? Do you hear that fizz? That's so lovely. Like it's just the right balance of treacle and I'm not sure I can taste the maple syrup, but maybe for distinguished palates you might be able to. I think I can trust that hint of vanilla. Mm, my gosh, that is so good. So pleased with this recipe. I'll have drunk this and be drunk by the time Andy even rocks up. Do you hear that fizz? Would you like to try some cider? I would, my dear. There you go. Thank you I've very already much. had a sneaky little try. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's good, isn't it? It's really bloody good, isn't it? You can totally get the get the treacle. Yeah. Just kind of nice, sort of almost burnt. It's lovely. I'm really chuffed how this has come out. Yeah. I might say maybe tiny hints of vanilla. I can't taste maple syrup. But maybe someone else with a better palate than me might. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to know what it would be like without it, but yeah. Not too sweet, it's just got the flavour. Yeah, it's really, I'm really pleased. I think I've just gotten right. I think it's the right balance of sweetener to sugar. Well done. Thanks very much. Cheers. Moggy box cider. Woohoo. Success. Very much success, chuff for that. So, if you've enjoyed seeing how I made this cider, Leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. tomorrow. Well I drank with you on a school night just so you didn't can sit on your own. And we're gonna sit here and drink the rest of the cider then. I'll go and get the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> no I think I think really this is probably plenty isn't it? You going for a pee? Are you are you going or you're staying in? No no come on if you're just gonna stand there get back in. Right, remember what we talked about, you've got to be really quiet because we're about to film. Can you manage that? No, probably not, but that's, that's well, that's just life, isn't it? So, I can just see the curtain just rippling with like a wagging his tail next to it. Right, are you going to go and lie down? Takes time to find the perfect spot.